So in my Bible studies here, I'm in Luke chapter 22, and I'm going to be looking at uh, not all of these, but verses between 35 and 53 in Luke 22, and we're talking about the uh, the swords, where Jesus says, uh, uh, sell your cloak and buy a sword. And uh, I wanted to speak on maybe a, a thought about that. So I'll start with uh, reading the verse here. And I, I want to give the caveat here that uh, I am not a Christian leader. I am a layperson dude. So uh, talking to fellow layperson dudes and, and ladies and whatever's that uh, uh, about uh, basically my thoughts as I'm going through my uh, Bible studies. And he said to them, this is starting uh, verse 35, and he said to them, when I sent you out with no money bag or knapsack or sandals, did you lack anything? And they said, nothing. Now this, this is, this has always kind of blown me away, this whole section here, where you say, I mean, if you're, if you, if you have a sense of the historical reality that these, well, the, if you, if you understand our, our, the history of humanity, <laughs> then you know that during this period of time, throughout most of human history until very recently, going out for a walk from one town to the next was, it was an adventure. It was certainly a risk. And you didn't really want to go out unless you were prepared, at least, for certain things like finding yourself in the middle of nowhere with no access to food or water and no idea where you're at. <laughs> that can happen easily. Uh, finding yourself overrun by bandits. No defense, no weapons, no nothing. And so Jesus sent out these, well, he sent out the 12 initially to go to the towns, and their instructions were to go to a town knock on doors, find someone that would invite you in, and if they invite you in, teach and minister to the town. And if nobody invites you in, then you dust off the, well, yeah, you dust off, you shake the dust off of your feet and your sandals, and you say, woe to you, beside a horizon, whatever, you're a cursed town, and you leave. And you go out, totally dependent on the kindness of strangers, but really you're totally dependent on the absolute supernatural mercy of God. That's where you're putting yourself in this position. You're putting yourself in a position, supernatural mercy on God for, uh, uh, to, to, to take care of you because you've got nothing. You've got none of the basic protections. You've got no money to buy things, totally relying on the kindness of strangers. You've got no food, totally relying on the kindness of strangers. You don't even have sandals. You don't even have sandals. You have to rely on other people to give you sandals. And now that Christ is going to be leaving, now he says, but now let the one who has a money bag take it, and likewise a knapsack. So now we're, this, this, this speaks somewhat to the whole miracles thing and, Everybody wants to produce miracles because everybody wants to legitimize themselves as some holy, infallible prophet type of person, a apostolic prophet, whatever. And here you see he sent his disciples out, and surely they must have been delivered from their pains through multiple acts of uh, miraculous mercy at the very least. Uh, they, they lived off of miracles. They lived off of Christ delivering them from extraordinary circumstances that no sane human should ever put themselves in. And they did so because they asked God, and no, that's not actually, that's not it. They didn't do so because they asked God, they did so. They performed and experienced were the recipients of and the doers of miracles, not because they willed it, but because it was part of the plan. It was part of the prophecy. So the prophecy is that, uh, uh, I tell you that the scripture must be filled in, in, in me, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And 
well, first off, uh, but now let let the one who has a money bag taken and likewise a knapsack, and let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. Now, now you must put yourselves the 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 miracles. I'm not. I'm going to send you out now, and now I'm going to ask you to actually uh, be aware of your physical security position in the world and to take measures to a degree and you'll see here that a degree is a very important note to to take care of your physical well-being in the here and now upon this earth as you walk it even as you're doing my will i am asking you to yeah go ahead and do some planning go ahead and not consider that i will deliver you with a miracle. Rather, when you go out into the dark, dark world, take precautions. Take precautions in this dark, dark world to defend yourselves. And they said, look, look, here are two swords. And he said to them, it is enough. Uh, so there was 12 disciples. He wasn't telling all 12 disciples to get 12 swords and form an army. Just basic defense, basic security against the insecurity of the world. Basic security against the insecurity of the world. I have my miracles come through my will, through my way, for my per um, This is Christ, not not literally speaking, I'm paraphrasing Christ, but uh, imagining. I'm, I think it's aligned with what Christ would say. <laughs> I, pretty sure. So this is this miracles are my way, my plan, my will. I'm not a parlor trick. I am the Lord and I have a plan and it it doesn't include making you look like magicians. It doesn't it, it doesn't include that. I'm uh, not even my disciples. My very I'm talking to my disciples here, dudes. Well, Christ is talking to his disciples. He's talking to his disciples and he's saying to his disciples, dudes, don't rely on me for, for miracles. I'm not saying that you can't rely on him for miracles, but don't rely on him for miracles. They're both kind of true. But but essentially, don't rely on me on for miracles. Plan for being in this world. Plan for the security. Take provisions. Uh, have a knapsack. Have a money bag. Have swords. Defend yourselves. But then there is a context. And so then Jesus goes out and... He's he's he he just got done demonstrating why are miracles happening in people's lives? Testify to the greatness and the glory of God to fulfill his prophecy, to fulfill his purpose, to fulfill his will. But even Christ, even though he is the is, was, and always will be, he is the totality of God, he is still also the Christ of God, and Christ in relationship with the Father. So Christ in relationship with the Father is here to serve the will of the Father. Even Christ, Christ, Christ certainly, when he prays to the Father for something that he wants, he has all the faith all the faith, all the faith to make it happen. If it's only dependent upon faith for miracles, Christ, all he has to do is say, Father, remove this cup from me, and it will be removed. Well, no. No, he would never say that, because he is Christ, and he is God, and he's the totality of God, yet he is only Christ. All these things. And so the Godhead would never, never, never say to another part of the Godhead, remove this cup from me. Christ would say what he said here. Father, if you are willing, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. And what happens? Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. He's made it very clear. Listen, man, I'd rather not do this. And, and if you look at what happened to him, he 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 he's praying and he's praying and he's in such agony. This 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 man, this you know, he is man, he is God, he is both at the same time. But this man is antis just anticipating what he knows is coming, and he is not afraid of the whips. He's not afraid of the nails. 
he is a. Af- I don't. I don't know if "afraid" is the quite what word. I'll, I'll use it, but it's probably not quite right. The right word, uh, but but in some sense, he is afraid of the spiritual death that the body is about ready to take part in. His body is about ready to go through a uh, spiritual death, where he is going to be taking on the sins of the entire world throughout all time, the beginning, the middle, the end of the human in its form in this chapter of our existentiality before we fully come into the kingdom age. So he is, he is, he knows what's coming and he doesn't want it. He doesn't want the pain. He doesn't want to experience the horrors of, of a soul that raped children but he's going to. He doesn't want to experience the horrors of a soul that is going around just murdering people. But he's going to experience that, 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 the, the dark anguish of, of such sin. Uh, he's going to experience that. And he doesn't want it. And he prays the perfect prayer. Of course, he's, his prayers are perfect. They're going to be perfect. And nevertheless, with the perfect prayer, with the perfect heart, his prayer was denied. <laughs> and he ended up having to fulfill the prophecy and take on the sins of the world and die a horrible, horrible, horrible spiritual death that thankfully uh, none of us will ever, ever come close to experiencing, not even the worst of humans will ever experience the ones that are aware, that have made aware of their sins. Since Christ doesn't know sin, he doesn't uh, experience sin, I guess you could say. What he experienced, well, this is my belief interpretation, what he experiences is the after effect of sin. He experiences the, the awareness of the unalignment with God. And it, he is separated from the Father. <laughs> Even though he's never separated from the Father, he's separated from the Father. And then Judas approaches him and kisses him. And it's, uh, it, it's like, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's like how, 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 how you think about the Judas kiss. The Judas kiss, it's so perfect. It's such a wonderful metaphor for the way uh, humans, human leaders, especially human charismatic leaders in the flesh a- act whenever they're about ready to do something horrible to you. They, they put it in the guise of something that sounds and looks incredibly friendly, like a kiss that it leads to Christ's arrest and execution, uh, like, uh, uh, affordable health care <laughs> that drives up the cost of uh, health care for everyone except for the insurance companies because it turns out to just be a, a Ponzi scheme of sorts for ins- well not literally a Ponzi scheme but in the, sp- the the spirit of a Ponzi scheme it's a it's a scam of sorts uh, for for the for the insurance uh, for the insurance companies <laughs> and here is the son of man <laughs> being betrayed like 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 so many righteous are betrayed with the uh, the the outward appearance of kindness that is uh, cloaked in uh, a wicked uh, wicked danger. Uh, but what happens here is one of his disciples, and we are led to believe for other reasons. Probably, uh, I mean, I don't know if this is a uh, maybe John. I forget. Maybe it's John. That did this. One of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Now he just got done telling them, dudes, listen, I'm not your security service anymore. You're going to have to provide your own security from here on out. I'm not going to do it. When you walk out into the desert, don't walk out naked because I'm not going to deliver miracles to protect you. Walk out. I mean, maybe he will, but I mean, in general, I'm not going to deliver miracles to protect you. You take a sword with you. You take uh, food and provisions and plan and design and, you know, do what you got to do to deal with the physical reality of a world that literally wants to kill you. And yet, when right after he says this, 
right after he says this, right after he says, get your swords. I, I understand why one of the disciples would be like, well, I mean, he said, get a sword. This, they're attacking us. And this is, uh, this is what's the hard, the hard, even for me is, uh, well, definitely even for me. Not, I don't know why I said even for me. I'm no one special. I'm, no, uh, but but definitely for me because I'm one of these. Uh, it is difficult for me to wrap my head around what I think this 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 challenge for the Christian is. We go out into the world with our swords and our knives and our guns and our knapsacks and all that. We got all that stuff. Nothing wrong with all that stuff. And we go out, and if somebody wants to uh, steal our stuff, we can protect ourselves. If somebody wants to kill us, we can protect ourselves. But when the state approaches Christ to arrest him for being Christ, Christ is not interested in fighting the state. Rather, he seems to be more interested in, in basically allowing the state to to show the world who and what it really is. It's a murderer at heart. And let them see that. And so the challenge to the Christian is, I defend myself. Like, I'll just do an example. If, uh, if some idiot dude uh, uh, pulls a gun on me up to my head, just deny Christ or I will kill you. You know, I don't know. I think uh, probably be like, okay, this is an idiot. I don't really care. I don't think God is really wanting me to uh, say anything. But, uh, uh, I mean, he knows my heart. He knows, uh, yeah, I, I can totally, uh, I guess you could say deceive this guy for the, for, 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 for I mean, there's, there's a lot of questions there. But, but for me, personally, Madman pulls a gun on me and says, "Deny Christ or die." I'm gonna say, "Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I deny. I deny. I don't know. I'd probably say I deny. Just say that. No, no, no. Shade deny Christ. I don't know if I could do that. I think I could. I think I could. I think I could. I think I could think about the balance of, uh, of, of stuff in my head to say, yeah, this is just a mad idiot, uh, just a random idiot madman. I'm gonna go ahead and save my life." But it, uh, and maybe maybe I don't know maybe I wouldn't but I think I would I think and I don't think I'd feel I'd probably feel bad about it <laughs> I'd probably like it would be some brain and like eh, did I do the right thing I don't know I I think ultimately though I don't think that Christ is going to ask us to uh, sacrifice ourselves stupidly and so if a madman says deny Christ go ahead and you know you're not denying Christ you're just saying the words to an idiot that uh, mean nothing uh, but if the state does it. Then it's different. Now we're talking about, on one instance, we got one lone mad idiot that uh, everybody like, oh, well, that's an idiot. But then if, uh, if the state comes after you, if the state says, I make it criminal for you to follow Christ and have this teaching or this way or whatever, now when the gun comes and they say deny Christ or die, at that point, that's different. Now, now we're now we're in another realm. We're in a realm where uh, the state is 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 claiming authority over God. I mean, to a certain extent, the madman's claiming authority over God. Anybody that wants you to deny Christ is trying to claim authority over God in a manner of speaking. But a madman claiming authority over God is laughable. The state claiming authority over God. If you are a Christian, I would say the witness is to die, is to say no, and they pull the trigger and you die. And that's about the only choice that we have. And that's hard. That's a hard thought for me to have because my tendency is to want to fight. Now, if the state shows up and they want to take my guns, I think I might fight them over that. I might. I don't know. Not that I have guns, but if I did, uh, I might fight them over that. But if the state shows up and tries to... Uh, then I'm get me to deny Christ in one way. I don't think that I could physically fight them. I am not going to fight them with the physical principalities. I am going to fight them with the sp spiritual principalities. You know, God willing, if the Holy Spirit uh, <laughs> gives me the strength I need, even Christ needed the Holy Spirit for. Well, in this case, an angel gave him some strength. So even Christ, uh, in, in, you know, the the. The, the, the flesh part of Christ. Uh, I don't understand the mystery of all that, but uh, that, that part of Christ needed, need, needed, needed sustenance from, from an angel. So uh, I would need that. I would definitely need some sort of supernatural intervention to give me the strength to uh, face death. Uh, and God willing, I would. And 
Ideally, I would, because now we're talking about being a witness that uh, when you submit to the state and others see you, you are, you are, you are now, now you really are denying this isn't, this isn't a word game. This isn't an obfuscation uh, to protect yourself, whatever it might be. This is basically endorsing the authority of the state over Christ and not even Christ would do that, even though Christ had all the power to blot this state out from existence with, with, with not even a sigh. He doesn't even have to have a sigh. He doesn't have to move his hands. He, he, he is a, there, is a, there is a flutter of a thought, and the whole world evaporates. So that's the power that he has within him at this moment in time. And he submits himself. And not only does he submit himself, but he writes the wrong. The wrong. The wrong is is that, uh, in my opinion, in my view, the wrong is uh, in in fighting with physical principalities and in physical principality ways, uh, spiritual battles. And this is a when the state comes for you for your guns. That's not a spiritual battle. That is a madman trying to. Steal, steal your stuff in the middle of a road. The state is turning into a high, highwayman robber. He's just a robber. That's all the state is at that point. But when the state comes for Christ, now that's a spiritual war. And you fight spiritual wars uh, spiritually, not physically. At least that's my thought. Comment down below if that's true, or if you think it's true.